Hi y'all, welcome to Petite Weaver Crafts episode 14. I'm recording here today on September 6, 2016. This past weekend was a three day weekend. Um, Monday was Labor Day, so most people get the day off. Um, and me and my friends went up to a nice cabin up in the mountains north of LA. Um, and we just had a wonderful time getting out of the city for a little bit. I didn't get as much knitting as I hoped during the trip, but I do have some finished objects for you guys this week. Other segments include stash, works in progress, and sewing. And apologies if you guys can hear the banging. I think they're doing some sort of construction in the apartment next door. Um, I waited as long as I could, but I wanted to get an episode recorded for you guys this week. So first up is finished objects. Um, so I showed you guys this hat last week. This is the Croft House hat. I believe this hat type is called a Tam. Um, I blocked the hat on a dinner plate, which is what gave it this super round look. I really enjoyed this project. This was my first Fair Owl project in a while. So I kind of forgot which yarn um, is my dominant color. Um, so I actually, if you can see here a little bit, um, this uh, this first section of Feral doesn't look quite as good as the other two. Um, one main difference is I kind of switched up the way I held the background color versus the accent colors. So this section is supposed to be identical to this section, but as you can see, they're not quite the same. Um, but yeah, it, I had a lot of fun. Um, this is knit with Knit Picks um, palette yarn. Um, just some basic fingering weight um, wool and so I probably will make another one um, with a different color scheme but it was a it was a very cute hat I really enjoyed it my favorite part are definitely these crown decreases though look how gorgeous the pat fit stayed in pattern and I used size two needles for the corrugated rib at the bottom um, for two stranded color work, I used a size four needle and when there was a rest row uh, with just a single color, I used a size three needle. And as I mentioned, the reasoning for that is um, in general, um, you will hold the, you will hold two colors a little bit tighter than you would just hold one because of the complexity of what's going on. Um, so I switch needle sizes when there's a rest row to kind of compensate for that. Here is the close up of the little houses. Already on to the next finished object. I did a lot of hats this week, you guys. So it's Twisted Stitches podcast, um, which I've mentioned on this podcast before, started a fall hat knit along um, called the Harvest Hat Along 2016. Um, it started on September 1st and it runs through, I think, mid-November. Um, so I started casting on a bunch of hats, um, mostly for gifts because they're pretty quick and easy and uh, I it, it's minimal time investment, minimal um, yarn investment, but people will still appreciate them and wear them. Um, so that's kind of the rationale. Um, but I, I really like these hats. I don't know if I want to give them away. So the first hat that I cast on for the Harvest Hat Along was the Escher Hat. This is a worsted weight Fair Owl hat. Um, and I used, um, Wool Days Scout Yarn, which is this lovely navy color. Um, I believe the colorway is called Blueberry. And then for the multicolored part, um, it's actually a skein of my hand spun. And the fiber was um, knitted wit fiber. Um, I didn't ever record the colorway down, um, but it was a chain ply um, yarn, so the colors stayed together a lot better, as you can see. And yeah, I love the way this turned out. Um, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with that one random skein of worsted hand spun, um, but I think this was a, a pretty good project to pick. Um, and of course I had some yarn left over, so I made a giant pom-pom, which is also super fun because it's all variegated as well. I love the pom-pom. I pretty much try to pom-pom everything that I can possibly can because I think they're amazing. Um, but yeah, it's a super cute hat. Um, I, it is supposed to be a slouchy hat. Um, I actually removed a few repeats of this kind of cubed pattern. Um, and you can check out my project page to see which exact um, rows I had removed. 
But yeah, it's super fun. Um, Fair Isle with worsted weight yarn is the bomb because it goes so, so quick and it looks really, really neat. Um, and since it is a worsted weight hat, it is super thick. Um, so I might be sending this to my friend in Colorado who might actually need the worsted weight hat because I sure don't here in LA. Alrighty, so the final finish object for this week is my lock hat. Um, and this pattern is by Tin Can Knits. Um, so this hat was knit on a size 2 for the ribbing at the bottom and a size 3 for the main body of the hat. And the yarn I used was some of my souvenir yarn from my San Francisco trip a little while back. I went to Imagine It, which is in the Mission, I believe. Um, and the yarn is some twirl yarn in the colorway Roscoe Twirl. Um, which is a churro merino ram um, mixed with some Cotswold sheep. It's about a sport weight singles yarn, um, and it's a little bit textured, um, and it has a little bit of vegetable matter in it, but it wasn't too bad. Um, but it was a super fun yarn to work with. Um, I hadn't worked with a singles yarn before, so I wanted to pick a smaller project and I thought this worked out pretty well. Um, this hat is super lightweight and I think it will be a good one to have in my wardrobe. Nice and neutral and the stitch patterning on it is gorgeous. And yeah, since this hat is so lightweight, I didn't add a pom-pom to it, but I really did want to. <laughs> but here is a close-up of the stitch pattern. It's kind of like a leaf, I think. Yeah, very pretty. So that's it for my finished objects. Three hats this week, you guys. That's that's a new record, I think, for me. Alrighty, next up is Stash. So I went to my local yarn store, um, Wild Fiber Studios in Santa Monica, um, to pick up some new yarn for... Um... So I went to my local yarn store, Wild Fiber Studios, for some yarn for a new pattern that was released today. So in June, Helen Stewart released a shawl pattern um, club. So she released a pattern every month and this shawl behind me, the Asana shawl, is um, pattern number three in, this, in the club. And um, the fourth pattern got released today. It's called the Quill shawl and it is a DK weight um, stripey um, shawl with a little bit of lace at the bottom um it's a triangle shaped shawl um which i don't normally knit um because i get a little bored with them but this one's a dk weight shawl so i think i think i'll be okay um but yeah so i went to wall fiber studio um my local yarn store and picked up some yarn for this project here are the three colors that i picked out um these are um madeline tosh tosh dk um, and this one, this yellow color is Candlewick. This super fun um, one in the center that's speckly is called Coley Festival, like H-O-L-I, Coley Festival. This last one's called Coquette. Um, and I thought these two, uh, these three colors would go really fun together. Um, the plan is to have these two colors striping and then this um, Coquette color will be the pop-up color that's in the shawl. Um, yeah, it, I, I've never worked with Madeline Tosh yarns before, um, but I've only heard good things. Total yardage for the shawl is approximately 720 yards, um, but the put-ups for the Mad Tosh DK is actually a little bit less than the um, one that was used in the pattern. So um, I picked up a fourth skein of Candlewick, um, I figured if I start running out of these yarns, um, I can always supplement with this skein. And then if I don't actually need to use it, then I have enough for another hat that I would wear. So yeah, but yeah, that's the benefits of having a local yarn store. You can just run in on an impulse and pick out a bunch of things and then run home with them without having to wait for shipping. But yeah, go out and support your lot your local yarn stores when you can. So next up is works in progress. So I did not finish the cardigan that I was hoping to finish by this week. Um, this is my improv cardigan. Um, this is part of the fringe 
and friends knit along. Um, I mentioned them last week. Karen from the Fringe Fiber Company has an amazing tutorial of how to uh, design and plan your own top-down raglan sweater. And here is mine. Um, it has a plain socket body and a bit of a scooped hem, which you can kind of see here. Um, I use short row shaping along the bottom of the sweater to kind of give it this kind of to give it this curved um, hem. And um, the shawl collar that I'm I also added a brioche shawl collar. I'm about two and a half inches into the collar and I probably have another four and a half inches or so. I kind of took on a lot when I decided to make a six inch brioche shawl collar around the entire sweater. Um, I'm losing a little bit of momentum on this, um, but it is so gorgeous and I, I, I'm really excited to have this finished and ready to wear for the fall. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Ranch of the Oaks, um, which is a local alpaca farm to me. And this yarn is a blend of their chocolate colored alpaca, um, some hot pink um, bamboo and merino blend. Um, so yeah, it's super, super squishy. Um, and I think it'll be amazing when I finally finish the miles and miles of brioche that is this. Um, collar um, but it's this is this was my first time doing brioche um, and it's super squishy um, and I'm yeah I'm really excited to um, get this thing done and off the needle soon and last but not least um, I actually did get a bit of sewing done this week um, as part of my weekend trip um, I was going to a music festival and um, me and my friend um, ran went to a local fabric store um, called Fabric Planet. Um, it's in Venice. Um, and they have a lot of funky f um, fabric and all kinds of prints. The comic book um, dress that I made a little while back, the fabric was from there as well. Um, so anyway, I'm... So anyway, um, I very quickly drafted a circle skirt pattern and made these super fun circle skirts for me and my friend. They were super simple to make. Yeah, all I needed was a waist circumference and I did a little bit of math and um, freehanded some um, patterns and, and very quickly sewed up two of these for me and my friend. Yeah, so let me know if you guys are interested at all in how to make your own circle skirts and I can throw up a tutorial of how I drafted the patterns and sewed them together. Alrighty, that's it for me this week. I'm keeping it nice and short because oh my goodness, this construction is so, so irritating. I really hope you guys don't hear it too much on your end. I will talk to you guys next week. Thank you so much again, you guys, for always taking the time to watch and listen to me ramble on about all the, the crazy things that I get myself into. Um, see you guys next week. Bye!